And to technology now with a futuristic question. Would you drink milk from a robot cow? Well, we sent our science and technology correspondent Ariel levin Waltman to taste the future, quite literally. And this is what he found. This isn't what you'd usually catch somebody wearing on a farm. But that's because this, what you're seeing here, isn't exactly the traditional cow. What this happens to be is a bioreactor. And this bioreactor here is creating the exact same milk proteins that a cow produces, which means that this machine is very likely the cow of the future. Sounds confusing? There's a sound logic behind turning this into this. If we look at what mankind has been doing for centuries, is utilizing cows as bioreactors. And frankly, and as an engineer, they're not very good bioreactors. In fact, if I would uh, design the system and show my boss as an engineer, he would fire me right on the spot. Welcome to Imagine Dairy, the Israeli food tech firm looking to replace cows with machines. To them, it's simple economics. The conversion rate of what the cow eat to convert it to the protein existing in cow's milk is very, very low, it's around 4%. While in our case, the conversion rate is almost 100%. Not just a matter of market efficiencies. The buzzword of the year is sustainability, and traditional dairy has come under very heavy regulatory scrutiny for both land use and carbon emissions, something Imagine Dairy says they can solve. You can uh, use much less water, around 99% less water, 99% land, 97% uh, less carbon emission. So it's a, in a much more environmental uh, friendly approach. But it's not like existing products that try to pretend vegetables are cheese. This cheese is real. There's just no cow involved. The process is called precision fermentation. Using genetic engineering, they can make yeast create milk instead of bread or beer. In the milk there are six main proteins. Currently, we are expressing only one of them, uh, but in the future, we are definitely going to uh, um, produce some other protein as well. And the protein they've mastered so far lets them create just about any soft cheese or dairy product on the market. Without the nasty parts, you don't want to eat. You don't want, I guess, the antibiotics, or you don't want the growth hormone, or you don't want the cholesterol, necessarily, the lactose. So uh, we can pick and choose and mix it uh, with uh, the target protein to create the, the, the actual food that we want. But just how does it compare? So now we're all pretty much out of our lab coats and uniforms and ready to do some taste testing here with a spread of somewhat traditional foods. We've got barekas, very Israeli. We've got some blintzes and of course, we've got the bread and the spread. Now, what makes this stuff all unique is, of course, it's made with these synthetic dairy products like the sort that we saw a little earlier today. And we're gonna do a little comparison how they stack up against the traditional varieties. And the products here each pass the taste test, at least for this reporter, who inveterately avoids substitutes. The real test to come, though, the price point. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's coming uh, there. Eventually, it will be much cheaper compared to the milk produced by uh, cows. The goal here is to be on the market by the end of 2024. A few last regulatory paperwork hurdles to clear, and from there, competition with the trillion-dollar global dairy industry. Move over. There's a new cheese in town.